This is the Reno 7 Pro disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Next, we need to apply heat to the back plate using a hairdryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we're going to use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. The back is made of glass. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and prying them off. On the back side, there's some graphene film and the graphene film helps transfer heat. And there are four Phillips screws holding this plastic bracket down in case you needed to remove that. There are 17 Phillips screws that need to be removed. Now the top cover can be lifted up and removed. The NFC antenna is located in the center as well as this large graphene film to help transfer heat. The LED flash is located here. There's also an antenna flex cable to the right of the NFC antenna. And here's a look at the other side. Now that we have access to the battery cable, we're going to disconnect that first. Once the battery cable is disconnected, we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. There are two coaxial cables on the right side, which also need to be disconnected by popping them off. Next, we can disconnect and remove the front facing camera. There's a single Phillips screw on the top right of the board, which needs to be removed. Now we can lift up and remove the main board. On the main board, there's a 50 megapixel primary lens, a 90 megapixel ultra wide lens, and a 2 megapixel macro lens. The cables for those can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's graphite film over the shields, as well as rubber gaskets around the connectors. There's also a liquid damage indicator, which is this white sticker over here. On the top of the board above the main camera, there's a secondary microphone. Once the graphite film is peeled back, we can see a thermal pad on top of these chips over here. And here's a better look with the thermal pad removed. On the back, there's copper tape on top of the shields, as well as some thermal paste. Once the copper tape is peeled back, there are thermal pads on top of the processor, RAM, and other chips. In order to remove the battery, there are pull tabs on either side to help us pry the battery off. Here's a better look at the battery, and there are two batteries combined together as one. Now the bottom cover can be removed. There is also a thin foam padding which needs to be peeled off. Now the flex cables connecting the main board to the subboard as well as the screen cable can be disconnected. Now the flex cable for the fingerprint sensor can be disconnected. At this point the subboard can be lifted up but one of the coaxial cables is still attached underneath which needs to be disconnected. The primary microphone is located in the center and there are rubber gaskets around these connectors. The SIM reader is located on the back. If you needed to replace your screen, you'd have to take the back plate off, remove the screws on the bottom cover and remove that bottom cover. You'd disconnect the flex cables and remove the subboard, which would then give you access to the red rubber gasket by the screen cable. You'd peel off and remove that red rubber gasket, heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry your old screen off, apply new adhesive, reapply your new screen and reassemble the phone. Moving on, the charger port flex cable can be peeled off at this point.
Here's a better look at that. And there's a red rubber gasket around the charger port itself. Now the speaker assembly can be lifted up, but keep in mind there's another coaxial cable attached underneath. And here's a better look at the speaker assembly, and there are white foam balls underneath this black tape. There's also a mesh filter and rubber gasket over the opening of the speaker assembly. At the end of this coaxial cable, there's an antenna board. The x-axis linear motor is held down with some adhesive, as well as the fingerprint reader. Once we peel back that flex cable, we can see the large copper vapor chamber underneath. The flex cable for the power button is located here, and there's a plastic bracket holding it in. So if you wanted to replace that, you just have to pull it out. The same goes for the flex cable on the side for the volume keys. The flex cable is located here. And there's also a plastic bracket inside holding it down. The board for the proximity sensor is located on top and next to it is the earpiece speaker which is held down with some adhesive. For the repairability score, I give this phone a six out of 10. Most of the parts are replaceable, but some parts are a little bit more difficult and will take some more time. Now I'm gonna put the phone back together. Once all the screws are back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. You flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.